better. So you know when it's the enemy, when you pray, you feel better. <laughs> Y'all be praying while I'm preaching. If I feel bad as I did, I'm going to sit right on down. And then y'all just pray to rest service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mr. Victor found a song or something. You know, uh, and maybe I did take sick while I was writing this message. Not to say it's the message. I don't know. But I want to tell you something. When you're pressing in for God, you have to understand there are consequences. There is an enemy who has another kingdom that's pressing against you. And many people in our church, not just me and my family and my wife, we have pressed hard for the kingdom of God. And that's the price you pay for that. Because sometimes we forget who our real enemy is, number one. And if you're like me, you don't know if people are up to something when they give you food or anything. I don't know. I just eat, you know. And uh, Leon told me the other day, I don't know why you ate that food from that woman. He can't travel with me as much as he used to, so I don't have no common sense, so I just ate. Yeah. But I did pray and say, God, you said nothing would harm me, so if I eat anything that's poisonous, you would, you know, come on. So yeah. that's what I'm believing God on. Hallelujah. So it was somebody crazy doing something. Uh, I've been there before, but God is always a deliverer. Hallelujah. Yes. The one thing I tell people, don't ever feel sorry for yourself because what happens in the world happens to you. <laughs> Just keep trusting God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have people trusting God with more crisis than I'm in. But I want you to just keep on praying and pressing. Don't ever give up prayer and don't ever give up on the kingdom of God. Because once Satan has got you there, then that's where he wants you to be. You know, uh, when we first get saved, like I was talking about, Jesus becomes our Lord and our Savior. And you know, sometimes over a period of time, you begin to see God move through experiences in your life. You've seen him deliver you. You've seen him heal you. You've seen him do many, many things. And then suddenly he comes out to be more than just Lord. <coughs> He's more than somebody I obey. He becomes someone I know. And he's someone that I trust. And not only that, everything that I have, it seems he has given it to me. And everything that I do, it seems he's told me to do it. So there comes a point when Christ truly becomes the king. He is the king of kings, Lord of lords. And today I want you to get on higher ground and understand that Christ was not from this world. If he was then the world would have had a hold on him. You remember Satan tempted him in the, at 40 days in the wilderness? If indeed, if indeed, he was not who he said he was, if he was from this world, and Satan would come to one of us and say, I give you everything. We had a brother yesterday, last Sunday, tell me he will take a car over the king. And he, was, he was being funny, I hope, but maybe not. But when we have a choice, <laughs> of the kingdom of God and the things we do see in this world. Let, let's not just talk about one or few of us, but many of us will choose what we can get in this world. But there is a kingdom that Christ came to present to us. Yes. It's called the kingdom of God. And when you're born again, like he told Nicodemus, my wife and I was talking about that this morning, and we were talking about it Thursday at communion. When you, when you see the kingdom of God, it's by the Holy Spirit. And that's how you get born again. And you're born again into the kingdom of God by the Holy Ghost. Yes. You can't get into that kingdom by flesh and blood, by water, by jobs, by works. You get in there by the Holy Spirit. He sovereignly <coughs> moved on me one day. He sovereignly moved on you one day. And you were healed. Maybe you weren't healed, but you found a new life. You were what? Born again. Yes. That's the kingdom that Christ is really king of. The one that, you don't have to turn to these scriptures, in Romans 14, you know they say joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's that kingdom that has that inner joy that is in you. You're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of death. You're not afraid of anything. Because you have a kingdom that's eternal inside, that testifies everything will be all right. Yes. That's the kingdom of which Christ is king of. If you reject that kingdom, there is no eternal life. 
I get tickled sometimes when I hear people say they had a near-death experience, they went to hell, and then they went to heaven. I was like, uh, you know, I start thinking about that. I, I think uh, if, if you came back here, it may be Satan that sent you back, because you probably ain't nothing but trouble since you came back. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, once you see Jesus, you ain't coming back here. Right. Who in the world would do that? <laughs> if something in you comes alive like you've never been before. Life, yes. eternal life, abundant life. On, That's what's in his kingdom. Yes. Why would you get in his face and say, I'm going back? No, sorry. That's all that stuff in the movies. But today I want to tell you, there is a kingdom that once you're in it, you completely, you ain't going to come back here. But you have a deposit in you. So you're not a, Ephesians says, you're not a citizen of this world. Hallelujah. You're a citizen of another kingdom. Yes. So this world don't feel right. Mm -hmm. You have a king. Say, I got a king. I got a king. And he ain't Barack Obama. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He told you to be submissive to those in authority. Because he put them there. Yes. But your king is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Well, the Jews, it's amazing that he came from them, but they never recognized him. So if you turn with me to uh, John chapter 19. <laughs> they rejected him. Hunter's Pilate mocked him. We know about the mocking. We're coming into that season where he was mocked only. And it says in, in, in verse 19 of chapter 19 of John, 1919. <clears throat> Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. But guess what? Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Arabic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests and the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I've written, I've written. Well, Pilate didn't want to make no mistake about it. He wrote it in three different languages. King of kings. He is the king of the Jews. But more than that, they rejected him, but we received him. You see, the truth of the matter is, if you reject Christ, there is no salvation for you. There is no kingdom after death but, but hell. But when you receive him, you have received the kingdom of God in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you're in the process of getting there. You know, a citizen on his way home, passing through, just an alien passing through. That's what you become all of a sudden. And so, you don't expect anything that this world won't give you. <laughs> You're passing through to a kingdom that has no end. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, I, today, I just want you to think about that. And I want you to think about who he really was. They rejected him, but Pilate put it up there anyway. But he wasn't just king of the Jews. They rejected him. Say, the Jews rejected him. The Jews rejected him. But I'm not. But I'm not. And then if you go right over to the next chapter, chapter 18... He says, Jesus said, in case you wonder where his kingdom is, verse 36, chapter 18. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to, to, to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king, then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right. In saying I am the king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Of course, Pilate said, What is truth? And that's pretty much how the world thinks what is truth. But Jesus Christ, the Bible says, came full of grace and truth. Yes. And I want to tell you something the Lord gave us a word for Thursday in communion is that truth will always win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. You got liars on every side. Yeah. Lies don't stand. Truth will remain. Come on. 
Hallelujah. And Christ is that truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. But he is king of a kingdom that is not of this world. And he knew what he had to come to do. He died for the world, but was not of the world. Yes, yes. And when you get called to him, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Yes. You're of another kingdom. Come on. He is your king. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejected by the Jews, but received by you. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And he said, he says, he didn't come here for himself. For this reason, he was born. The reason that Pilate is about to sentence him to die. That's why he was born. You and I are very grateful that he is who he said he was. Nicodemus saw him. You have to turn to the scripture, but in John chapter 3, he saw him work all these miracles. He said, you must be from God. He was a Sanhedrin. He was a, he was a big Pharisee. But he said, you must be from God because no man could do all this. You and I know he's from God. Not only did he do all of this, but he was raised from the dead by his own power, Hallelujah. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to receive a kingdom that has no end, but it has a king. Yes. You have a king. Yes. Hallelujah. You have somebody who runs everything in your life. He's just not when you're on the job or in church, your Lord. He's your Lord in every single thing you do. Yes. And one day, you're going to look to him as king. Yes. And there ain't going to be no turning back when you see him with that crown on his head. Yes. Not one crown. They said, the Bible says he's crowned with many crowns. Yes. Hallelujah. Today, yes, he's Lord, but he's the king yes. of kings. Yes. At the end of this time that we're in, we know that Christ himself is going to come and that kingdom that he would establish, there be no other nation or king who will not be subject to him. During that reign of Christ that we soon could be entering in, because he is coming soon. Yes. There's enough signs out there for anybody to know that. Even if you're not saved, you know something's wrong with this world. Mm -hmm. But the place that you're going to it's a place where he himself is king and king only. And every knee shall bow and tongue confess Come on, Jesus. that he's Lord and Savior. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. There's not going to be any room for any dissension in that kingdom. No. The Bible says, I saw Satan fall like light. It ain't no way you can exist in the kingdom of God and not treat him as king. Today, I want you to get used to him being your king. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you to just say he's Lord. He's my king. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. 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 And you know, over and over in the scriptures, I don't want you to turn to all of these. But when Jesus said, if, it's okay because he, he can get, he can, uh, he can take care of anybody who lay hands on him. Did he say that? Yeah. Because in Matthew 26, he says, put your sword back in your place. All who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. One can destroy the world. Thousands of angels could have come. Why? Because in his kingdom, he's already king. Yes. <laughs> come on. He's already king. Yes. Even if he's in Pilate's hand. He's like a lamb. Yes, but he's king to the heavenly bodies. Yes. He's totally king to them. And so if he wanted angels to come, he'd just say, Father, Son. He said, at once they will come. Yes. That's the kingdom that you and I don't see. But that's that faith that you have about what is unseen. You believe because he said it exists. You believe because in your heart, when you got saved, you know there's another kingdom coming. Yes. When you say the Lord's Prayer, you say, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth, that's why it, it began right here, as it is in heaven. It's God who is your king, and none other. 
in Jerusalem. One reason why the Sanhedrin was so upset in the Pharisees is because when he entered Jerusalem on that donkey, he fulfilled the scriptures that says your king comes riding on a donkey. Not a chariot of gold, not with a bunch of servants, riding with his feet almost dragging on the ground. Not on the donkey only, but on a donkey's coat. Full of humility. He didn't come to be king of this world. He came to give himself up to this world so that you and I can enter his kingdom. He sent the apostles out often in the scriptures over and over again. We see him mentioning, mentioning uh, that he sent them out with the anointing to preach what? The kingdom of God. Come on, Jesus. People were healed. You have to turn on the scriptures for a second time. In Luke 9, verse 2, he said, Preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick, including me. Come on, Jesus. And yes, include Lord. you. Yes. In Luke 10, 9, he says, And, and, and heal the sick who are, who are there in every town you enter. Then the kingdom of God is near you. How do you know when you get healed? That the kingdom is near you because God healed you. The kingdom is full of health and safety, joy, Glory. peace, righteousness, Thank you, Lord. And goodness, yes, sir. and eternal life eventually. Mm -hmm. That's how you know when you're in the midst of a storm, you have <coughs> peace. It's because you're in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look. That's why you don't worry about accusers because you're in the kingdom of righteousness. Yes, Lord. That's why you can smile and laugh when your enemies falsely accuse you and shake you up and say nasty things about you. Come on. Because your joy don't come from the outside. Hallelujah. It comes from the kingdom. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, look, hey, you need to know where you belong. Yes. In a kingdom that's not made of hands, doesn't count on money, and don't count on friends. It comes on one thing. Did you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And is he in your heart? Yes. Because you have been born again. Hallelujah. Into another kingdom. Oh, yes. You're in the world, but you're a citizen of a kingdom. And that kingdom has no end. Satan encroaches because you're in the world, so you can get sick and you can lose this and you can have this happen. But he can't take your soul. Only God can send a soul to hell. Only God. So did you know Satan can't send you to hell? Only God can. Yes. Today, I want you to take everything you know about Jesus and wrap it up in the fact that he is the king of kings. I want you to take every word you have heard and say, you know what? I live in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what I go through in this whole world. There's a kingdom coming. Yes, sir. And it's beginning in me. Because my trouble in this world doesn't define who I am. I'm a citizen of a whole other kingdom. And I didn't come off a spaceship. I was born again. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Yes. Today, I just want you to be excited about who he is. I want you to turn with me to First Timothy. <clears throat> Oh, they mocked him, and you can read that in chapter 19. We're going to be reading that for Good Friday anyway. But I want you to know, <laughs> he was king of another kingdom. That's why he let them kill him, so that you can be in his kingdom where he is. He, he humbled himself. Just like he rode on that donkey. He didn't come like God. He came like a sacrifice, like a man. But he is... Timothy is coming on the back side of the resurrection and the ascension of Christ. This letter is written so that we can understand that God revealed this to Paul, who sent it to Peter, to uh, Timothy. And we, we go here a lot, so you may be familiar with the scripture. Oh. In 1 Timothy, verse 17, I really like you to read it with me. It says in verse 17, Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, 
be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't see him that way yet, you're going to climb up a little higher. Hallelujah. When you start seeing, I'm in the world, but I live for a kingdom who Christ is the king of. Yeah. You don't vote for him. He was born into the kingdom. Hallelujah. He was with the Father from the very beginning. <clears throat> Existed before anyone was created upon. Yeah. The kingdom is his. Everything that was made was made through him, for him. The kingdom is everything that he is. Life is in the kingdom, abundant life. Yes. Yes, sir. You and I don't have to worry about him coming soon because you're a citizen of the kingdom that he's bringing with him. Yes. And all those saints that's coming back, they're already with him. They're going to be rejoicing. And you're going to see loved ones again. And you're going to be a citizen with them if you're still in this earth. To die is get to, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So yeah. if you're in heaven with him, it's fine. You're Come still on. in the kingdom. Come on, Jesus. When he comes back and he and you're still here, he will change you because flesh and blood can't enter that kingdom. Yes. He has to change you. Come on, sir. In the twinkling of an eye, though, yes. yes. You will be changed. Yes, yes Lord. Because you enter in a kingdom that has no end. Mm -hmm. This body has an end. But the kingdom of God has no end, and the people who live there have no end. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your body got to change. Say, my body got to change. My body got to change. In order to enter the kingdom of God. If you turn with me to 1 Timothy 6. <clears throat> Verse 15 says, <clears throat> and Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. Read it with me. God the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. You haven't seen Jesus like you're going to see him. They can put on these movies and have this little hair flowing down and this person. If God wanted us to know what he looked like on the earth, we'd have had cameras back then. It wasn't important what he looked like on the earth. He gave that up. You know this guy, Shabazz, they put it. See, people who say they believe us, but they're not. I'm going to put you in a casket and and leave the window open for people to see you forever. That is such a joke. It is so ridiculous. I'm not, I hope nobody has that kind of thing in their family. <laughs> There's no reason for you to see that. That body's going to be changed. Yes, yes. And if that's all there is, that ain't nothing. <coughs> you don't need to go in there and see Billy and shut ass. I don't care how good a man they being in a glass tomb means nothing because you must be changed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This body has to be sown ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But the good news is the body you get will be eternal. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You're entering a kingdom that has no end. Inside of you is your citizenship to enter. You have been born to you will not be denied your king. Your walk in your life is searching for your king, looking for him in every area of your life. And when you see him, like every eye will behold him, you will be so excited. It will fulfill everything that you want. He's your king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, if you turn with me uh, to uh, Revelations. <laughs> Seventeen. You with me? Yes. yes. Come on, Jesus. Oh, we worry about a lot of things that happen in this life. But just need to know. Be on your way to your king. 
Hallelujah. 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 On a journey to see your king. Yes. You're not going to feel whole until you completely see him. Hallelujah. 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 Then you will be complete. All that you feel that's missing in your life will be fulfilled. Like nothing you have ever seen. That's why Martin Luther King could die for Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, I see the mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Moses went up on that mountain <coughs> and wasn't worried. That's why Paul said, he lived as Christ, he died as king. Because yes. he knew there was something better. Yes. There's a kingdom that I will have no end, no sickness, no death, no crying, no weeping. Full of joy, peace, and righteousness. Yeah, Something I felt when I was on the earth. But now that I'm here, I feel it to the fullest. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't long for the kingdom that you're in, you're not an alien here yet. If this whole world is giving you what you need, you haven't become an alien to it yet. Paul said, I know how to base and abound. Yes. Until you get to a point that nothing you have or don't have means nothing yes. compared yes. to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. I want the kingdom when I'm weak and poor or sick. I want the kingdom when I'm well and rich and happy. Hallelujah. Yes. I want the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because I know what earth has here is not enough. That's right. Sooner or later, whatever you have, you're going to want some more. Mm -hmm. In the earth, but in heaven. You all satisfied. Hallelujah. And complete. Yes, Lord. And wanting of nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Revelation 17, verse 14. They will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them. Because he is who? Lord of Lords. And who? King of Kings. King of kings. And with him will be his called. Chosen and faithful followers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I just want you to know he's king. Yes. Today, I don't want you to worry about anything because in you is your citizenship papers. Yes. You have been born again into a kingdom that has been opened. Your trouble down here. It's nothing but creating patience for you and perseverance for you till you see the king. That's all your trouble does. Make me more patient for the king. That's what it does. Make me persevere for the king. It makes me hold on for the king. Hallelujah. It doesn't make me shrink and turn back. Yes. It makes me stronger yes. for the king. Yes. Because something in me says that kingdom is greater than the world. Something in me testifies that what Christ has for me, this world cannot possibly give me. Yeah. My wife would say my husband couldn't give it to me. That's right. He might be good, he might be nice, but he can't give me everything I need. That's right. And a husband might say the same. But today, if he's not your king yet, you need to look for him until he becomes the king. He's not going to be your king until you get rid of this whole world. Separate from him. You can't be in this world and say he's your kingdom and you be of the world and his kingdom. You're not going to be. He will spit you out. So if you're not there yet, don't feel condemned by this message. Just say, Pastor, I need to get there. I need a long for a kingdom that has no end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your ears, Lord, I have a king who didn't have to be voted in. He existed in. I have a king who's not of this world, who was born into it. I have a king who man didn't kill it, but God had to fulfill the scriptures in him. And he died for the sins of the world. But he was still my king on the cross. The Jews rejected him, but Pilate had it right. King of the Jews. But he had a kind of wrong. King of everything. Mm -hmm. 
king eternal, universal. King of a kingdom that will have no end. Earth is passing away and everything in it. But the kingdom of God is advancing by force. Yes. It's not a comet, it's not another planet, it's not an asteroid. It's a city that will have no end. And it's a place where flesh and blood can't enter. Today, I want you to ask yourself, Lord, am I born again? Am I really looking for the kingdom of God? Or am I searching for some kind of fulfillment in an earthly way? I want my fulfillment to be only in you. Not in my success. Not in my wealth. Not in my friends. But only in you. Today I proclaim you king. If you say, Pastor, I can't say that yet. I want you to come up here. I'm going to tell you, he can't be your king and you have a foot in the world too. Did you know that? The father of this world is a father of lies. The father of the kingdom of God is full of truth. And truth will prevail. Today, if you're in here and you say, Pastor, I need someone to come over and talk to me a little bit more. I want to be sure that when I'm out of this world, I'm in the kingdom.